process that companies lead customers through when they're purchasing their products. But real talk, your sales funnel is how you get paid. That's just simply what it is. A sales funnel is what you take your customer through from beginning when they first hear about you or find you online or see a sign somewhere if you're brick and mortar to the moment they purchase and then your follow-up. That is your sales funnel. I'm not going to talk about that completely. I'm just going to talk about the email part of the sales funnel because that's a whole session in and of itself. But I don't want us to get caught up on terms. I don't want us to, I don't want anyone here to be like I was, like, what is a sales funnel, huh? I don't want you to be like that. So here's your sales funnel, just a quick and dirty outline for you. Like I said, we're not going to get into all of these pieces, but I wanted you to see, have a big picture of it so that when you're working on your email campaigns, you understand its place in your sales funnel. So a sales funnel is essentially like I said, how people come find you and then purchase from you. Lead generation is your emails, your social media, your Facebook. If you're doing print, radio, television ads, and you're speaking, your um, events you might do, like, like for a lot of us, we want those of us who launched businesses this year, we, we, we wanted to do maybe big launches in person, but we're doing virtual launches now. So that's becoming a major thing. Or if you're doing trade shows. So this is how you tell people about your business. This is essentially how you advertise. Let me get my little laser pointer here. Here we go. This is how you advertise, okay? Some people can only do a couple of these things. Get overwhelmed or you don't have uh, everything that you need in place. Don't get overwhelmed. You start in one place. Today, we're going to talk about starting right here with your email campaigns. So people find you. All these people find you. They sign up to your email list. And then you have these contacts, whether it's email or text. Then you follow up in this group, the qualified leads, this is where people are like, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I like it. I want to learn more. I want to be on your list. I want to hear from you. And then after they hear from you for a little while, then they buy. These are your sales. And these are the people you need to nurture even more because they love you. They purchased from you. They love you. They had great customer. You had great customer service, right? And they love you. And then they become your fans, right? So now... After they become your fans, you have to nurture them. So we're going to talk about starting an email campaign all the way through this cycle and then how you nurture them with continued follow-up, continued outreach via email. Okay? Does that make sense? If that makes sense, everybody drop a yes in there for me so I can, so I can know that you're with me. Now, how many of you are currently using email? Anybody using email now? There are a couple reasons why this is important. One of the first things that I learned when I started my business was you don't own social media. I started with social media in the very beginning I started a money, it's called hashtag money chat. That's what I started. That's how the brand was built. And as we were learning and it was new and it was fun, we also learned that we don't own that. So if they shut down Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn. If they shut down all of that today, Snapchat, where, where are your people? If you don't have them on your list as an email or, or on your customer list, they're all gone. So you want something that you own. You want to make sure that you know who your people are, who's following you. We all have Facebook groups and all this kind of stuff, and that's great. We use that as an avenue, but at the end of the day, you can't download a list from Facebook. You can't download a list from LinkedIn or Instagram. So you don't own um, social media. So you want to make sure that, you're, make, that you're, you've got your people with you. You're paying customers and those who are interested on your email list. Um, your email list just is gold. It's your outreach. This is the way you connect with them. 
And this is the way you also find out what your customers need. So, so with email, it will also be in a tool. Again, we're not going to completely rely on these tools, but you can download your email list into an Excel file or a CSV. I encourage you, just like backing up a website, I encourage you to download your email list regularly. And we'll talk a little bit more about the tools in a minute, but this is just one thing I wanted to just park here to make sure that you're downloading your information regularly because, again, we're utilizing these tools. We don't own them. So make sure that you're keeping your stuff backed up. Another reason why it's important is, um, I'm gonna show you guys this on the website. I'm gonna scoot this over and then I just wanna make sure you guys can see it. You, on your website, you want to have a pop-up that captures emails. I'm gonna show you, uh, let's see here. Can you guys see this screen? I wanna make sure, Nina, that they can see this um, that I've put over here in front of the presentation? Um, we see the presentation. Okay, only the presentation. There's another screen. No, 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 we can see the website screen, I'm sorry. Yep. You can see the website, okay, good. The young lady in the, with the afro? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yep. So, so, so this website, this is my new baby. And I wanted to show you this because it is fresh, it is new. I don't have a thousand, two thousand, three thousand people on this list. Um, but I want to show you the website and how your website should be set up to capture emails. I have three places on here where you can capture email. And the first one is a pop-up, which will pop up in a second. But it's a pop-up that offers, that, that has an offer. And I capture their email there. The days are over. I don't even know that they were ever really real of just saying, hey, sign up to my email list. We're getting a million emails. Nobody's doing that anymore. So what you want to make sure that you do is you have something that you offer. You can offer a checklist, a download, something like that. This is a retail website, so I'm offering a percentage off in the pop-up. But you can do, much like what I did down here, get our free guide. It doesn't have to be a guide. It can be a guide. It can be a checklist. It can be a two-page checklist. Whatever your field uh, your industry is, whatever it is that you're great at, or I'm sorry, not that you're great at, but whatever it is that is a pain point for your customers, put that in the checklist. Put it on audio. You can take, do just what we're doing now on Zoom, record 10 quick steps, um, five easy ways, or anything like that. Record it on audio, link it up to your website as a download, and offer it to people. You can offer a spreadsheet. In my other business, I offer budget spreadsheet downloads. So don't make it hard. I think a lot of times when we as entrepreneurs, we have so much going on and we look at this stuff and we're like, man, I just don't have time to create that. That means I got to create something else. Don't worry about that. Do it. Keep it easy. A checklist. You can do a one pager, two pager. An audio is super easy. You can even record that on your phone. And, and upload the audio to your website. And here you have something to offer them. The other thing that I have is a sneak peek. Um, and this is retail. So this works for retail, might not work for service-based or other types of businesses. You don't have to have three, but I suggest, not suggest, you must have at least one. Because what you don't want to happen is someone to come to your website and they do not buy and you didn't capture them. So you've got to give them something. And if you really think about it, think about all the websites that you go to and what captures your attention. And that's the kind of thing that you want to offer to your audience. So don't make it hard. It can be, if you just sit down, one way to do this is this. This is assignment number one. I don't know. I'm going to try to keep a track of these assignments that I give you guys. Assignment number one is you sit down you take 30 minutes and you just brainstorm and you just kick out your top 10 or your top five things that you know that your audience needs and you provide them with that information. Here's the top 10 ways. If somebody drops in the um, chat, 
um, what their maybe what their business is or their in industry is, and then I can maybe think of a top ten or something like that. But that's what you want to do, and you want to keep it easy. But you must have something. If you're not using email, especially, I see this all the time. And honestly, I launched my book like five years ago, and I did this. You put the cart before the horse. You don't have a list, but you want to do a launch. Okay, a t-shirt brand. Um, but if you have a if you have a t-shirt brand, from to me, what I would think with a t-shirt brand would be that you would. What is the message behind the t-shirt brand? That's the key. If you plop that in there real quick, then I can throw some things out there. But you have a t-shirt brand. When people come to your site, and it could be style. You could be top 10 ways to rock your tea or something like that. Um, top 10 ways to um, top 10 ways to rock your tea. You could do something like different styles. Yours could be a lookbook, actually, where they 10 different ways to wear your tea. I think that would be a great idea. Um, but you can plop in there and tell me if you think it'll be a great idea, <laughs> Crystal. <laughs> uh, build self-esteem, self-acceptance of little girls and natural hair. Yes, you have so much that you could do. Different um, hairstyles for young ladies with natural hair. Easy. Um, and you want to send them something once a week. Once you get them on the list, you want to send them something every week. Crystal Lee has... Beauty industry, naked soaps, 100% all natural skin and hair. Oh, all day. You could definitely do top 10 ways to protect your skin, top 10 ways to moisturize your skin, things like that, or top natural products to moisturize your skin, and then link it back to your products. Um, so at least once a week, you make sure you, you want to be emailing your people at least once a week. All right, let's see. Now, oh, let me see. I went away from the website. Okay. So now is where we get to take a little moment. And I don't know if we have the timer on this Zoom, but I want to tell you the types of emails to have. Um, and then I want to give you a chance to just do a little brainstorm on what your email topics can be. So what the tool I use for email is called MailerLite. Doesn't mean you have to use that. There are 20 million of them. Constant Contact, AWeber, um, MailChimp. Don't wreck your brain trying to figure out what you're doing as far as which one of these to use. Do a couple of comparisons. There are a million comparisons online. Do a couple of comparisons. Pick one. We, do, we have to do ex execution here. We have to execute. Everybody type in there, execute, execute, execute. That's what I want to hear. Everyone needs to be executing. We spin our wheels trying to figure out tools and research and all of this kind of thing. Once you've done the reading, once you've found the tools, execute. That is key. So pick your tool. Again, I use MailerLite. Exactly. Don't over, overthink. I use MailerLite because it is easy, drag and drop. I've used all of them. Again, I've been at this a while. So I've used MailChimp, AWeber, and Constant Contact. And there are even more than that. So pick one and go for it. The emails that you want to program, always program a welcome and a thank you. They're like, they're all in one. It's not both. It's, it's one email. Welcome to our list. Thank you so much for joining. But don't let that be all you say. Offer something for them. You can even, the, the number two I have on here is called Start Here or The Best Of. But you could, you could put one and two together in an email. That way they have something to do while they're waiting on your next email. Or you could separate them and put some good information and tools in the welcome. And then the next email you send is a start here or here's the best of if you have a blog or maybe you've been featured in media. Um, you want to make sure though that you're focusing on what your audience needs. So... You don't want it to be, hey, look at me, um, I'm great kind of thing. You want it to be more so, um, you want it to be more so, okay, you need, I know that my clients have this pain point and I am going to solve for that pain point. So for me, let's say I'm a, I'm a, a personal finance and business coach. I know my people need money help. I'm going to solve 
for their money problems. So I'm going to send them messages and emails related to their problems because I'm here to solve them. So you want to make sure that it is informational and you're giving them good content, tools and apps, things they can use. So it's not like all about you as the business owner because you'll lose your audience pretty quickly with that. So you want to do a welcome and a thank you first. Your next email sh that you program should be a start here or best of. If you don't, if you're brand new and you don't have start here or best of, don't worry about that. It's fine. What you could do instead is do, you could send them links to some good articles or good videos about um, your topic. I do suggest that you make sure you vet whatever content you're sending out. I generally send out from either blogs and, and YouTube channels that my friends have that I know are legit, or I send from major news, news sources, MSNBC, CNN, all of those kind of things, because you just, you, your brand is connected to this. So you want to make sure that everything you send is legit and you're not going to have time to vet everything. So you have to use um, news sources that you know are, um, that you can rely on. So you'll send welcome, start here. Then you'll send an informational, no sales. Not, nothing wrong with having your website at the bottom or something like that, but your next two or three should be informational. You're giving them meat. You're giving them content. You're telling them how to do something that they need to know how to do. Uh, a lot of people, they worry about, am I telling them too much? Am I giving them too much? I don't worry about that because you'll, you're going to get the sale. So I give them what they need to know. And I do not worry about, I'm giving away the store, I'm, you know, whatever. I, it's time out for that, really, because these are your customers. And if you want them to buy from you, you need to make sure that they see you as an expert and that they see you as a reliable source yourself and that you always give great content. Trust me, people know when it's fluff. People know when it's... Um, just some, some just random, vague, you know, your customers are not stupid, let out. The other thing, the sixth one is, what can I do for you, the biggest struggle? So do you kind of see the pattern here? You're giving them information and then you're asking them about themselves. You're not talking about just yourself. You're asking them, what is your biggest struggle? That is a great survey to do. And you, you do this in a Google Doc or what have you, Survey Monkey, something like that. You have your questions. Don't send an email asking what is your biggest struggle and expect them to just type in a big text box. You have to give them options to choose from, and then maybe you can say other and give a text box. But you want to help them. People are busy. They have a lot going on. They don't have time to try to figure it out, and they're not going to answer you if you make them do that. And then after the biggest struggle, you do an informational one and you do sales. This is where you sell. This is where you ask for their money. You ask them to purchase your product or your service. You can only do two informational ones if you want to. That's fine. This is just like an outline to kind of give you an idea. And what you essentially do is you're going to follow this outline it's give, give, then take kind of model. You're going to follow this outline as you keep moving forward. You're going to get here to the biggest struggle and do a sales. Then you'll get into your regular messaging flow with your offers, your downloads, your programs, whatever it is that you're offering. But you need to make sure you also have a good flow of consistent, just information with no sales. Because if you think about, think about all of us, people who are constantly buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, you unsubscribe and you don't want people to unsubscribe. So you have to give them content, give them meat, be a resource for your customers. If this is making sense to everybody, put yes, yes, yes in the comments for me. So I can see, we're gonna take questions at the end. So please be writing down your comments so that we can answer them at the end for you. All right. 
I wanted to give you an example. I don't know if you can see this that well. Hopefully you can. I'm going to show you from the website as well. But this is an example of a welcome and thank you that I did. This Ignore this part. This is part of the presentation. <laughs> this is the welcome. So I thank them for subscribing. I tell them about their shipping. Let me see if I can pull this. Go back to the website and pull this for you guys because I really want you to see that. Uh, thank you for joining. This should be it. Can everybody see this? Let me see if I can make it bigger. You, everybody should be able to see this, right? So this is the thank you page. And this actually, you can see the, the back end. This is showing you the back end of the mailer light system. So you see how easy it is to just drag and drop. I'm not going to mess with this because this is live. <laughs> so, and I took a long time to build it. Look, <laughs> so um, you are appreciated. Do the personalization. I talk about that, I think, in another slide um, because of your awesome timing. And then I tell them what they're going to get. I tell them about their shipping. If you're service based, you're going to, you would tell them about what you're offering as they are in your email list. What are you going to be giving them? Are you going to be giving them a um, access to a Facebook group? Are you going to be giving them um, live calls, live on your Facebook group, live on your YouTube channel? What are you going to be offering them? How often do you write on your blog? You want to make sure they know what to expect. And then you want to be consistent. I can't, uh, I can't express that enough. Even I have had challenges with the consistency. I've been in business a long time and sometimes you get overwhelmed and then you don't reach out to your people for weeks and months. And then you feel like you can't reach out because it's been so long, but it's okay. Reach out, reignite that list, re-engage with your audience, and then at least send an email out once a week. And you can program them. We're going to talk about that in a minute too. So this is a welcome email. You see in here, um, let me go down, sorry. So down here, I've got a little stay tuned. You've got your social. Um, this social is for them to contact you. And then this is the share. You want to make sure you ask them to share. Even sometimes you can put it in a little box that says, please share this newsletter. People don't think, they, they think about themselves. Oh, this was cool for me. I love it. So they don't think, let me tell somebody else about it. Ask them to share your content in your email list. So this is the thank you. The next one I think was a survey. Let me go here. Um, is this it? No. I thought I had the survey one up, but I'll try to circle back and, and show you guys that. But I have it here on the slide, I believe. Yes. So here I did, what are your biggest career challenges? This survey in Mailer Light, and I'm sure in all the other ones, you can do a survey right within the platform. So I was able to do that here, I believe, or you could do Google Docs, or you could do SurveyMonkey and embed it. It is not hard. You can do it. And then I just put a little funny thing because you don't just want to send, hey, tell me all about yourself. You want to engage them. Always thinking, be thinking about how you can engage your audience. Okay? Uh, let me see. The next thing, I want, I want to give you all a chance to just think through your list. What should you say in your how should you structure your emails? Keep it simple. Everybody say simple. <laughs> it's like being in church. Everybody say simple. Don't overwhelm yourself. It's like school. The way we learned how to write our papers in school, you had an intro, you had your three points, and then you had a close. Well, we're going to switch it up a little bit. You're going to have your intro and welcome. You're going to have whatever your topic is that you're talking about that day. And then you're going to have your close 
thank you, et cetera, et cetera, or a recap. And then you're going to have your call to action. Your call to action can be weaved into your point as well, but this is, this is it. It's like, it's like, think of your email like writing a mini blog post. You want to be engaging. You want to be interesting. And you want to write in your voice. You don't have, be, be who you are. Be who you are. Write in your voice. And people will feel the authentic you coming through the words they read. So intro and a welcome, whatever your topic is for that day, and a close. And have a call to action. So I know I said don't sell, right? You're not always selling. But your call to action is check out these resources, read these books, that kind of thing. That's what, you, that's what you want to have in your call to action when you're not selling on your email. And you always, always want to ask them to share. So that should always be a call to action. So now we get to do a little work. I don't know if, I don't know if you guys will be able to hear my music, but we get to do a little work now. You guys get to take one minute. And I know Zoom has a timer, but I don't see it on here. But I want you to take one moment. And again, we're going to keep it easy. The welcome and thank you, don't worry about coming up with something for that. I want you to think about your business. And I want you to write down on a piece of paper or in your notes on OneNote, whatever, and I want you to write down what your emails can be. What can be your first topic? What can, just the topic. We're not trying to write it right now. Just the topic. What is the first topic you can talk about to inform your audience about something that they need to know about that you're an expert in? So I want you to come up with two informational topics right now. We're going to set the timer in a second. And then I want you to... Think about what can you put in a biggest struggle survey? What would the topic, like what would the top three, just do three for now. Your biggest struggle survey, you're probably going to do three to five, but you don't want, it can't be 10 questions. People are going to shut down on you. They'll never answer you. Three to five questions for their biggest struggle. And then of course, give them a option to put their own text in. And then I want you to think of what your information plus your offer post um, email would be about. So let me recap real quick. Forget about welcome and thank you. That's easy. You can do that. I want you to think about right now and write it down. I want to see some of them in the chat when you're done. We'll tell you when. What will your inform first informational topic be? Your second informational topic? What three things might you ask on a Biggest Struggle survey? And then what your offer is going to be. What do you want them to do? What do you want them to buy? So I don't know. Let me see if I can put some music on. See if you guys can hear this. Nina, let me know if you can hear it. Then they can hear it. And it is, we're going to turn the timer on right now. I'm just going to be the timer. And we're going to do one good minute. Give you guys a chance to do this assignment. All right. Can't hear it yet. You ready? Yep, I'm ready. Let me see. Can you guys hear that music? That's Detroit House. Y'all know anything about that? <laughs> you gotta turn it up a little bit. Too. Can you turn it up? Nobody can hear it. Can you hear that? There you go. Okay. Yeah. So, all right, our one minute starts now. Yes, yes, Mike Huckabee. We know, Tracy, don't we? We know. Make it hard. Just the first thing that comes to mind. You can tweak it later. Is 
So it's three topics. It's, it's, three, uh, it's four things, actually. Your first two informational topics, your biggest struggle survey topic, and then what your offer would be. Oh, are we up? <laughs> are we at our minutes? Is everybody ready? Are you ready, guys? Type ready, 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 ready. Okay, while everybody's everybody else might be writing. Those of you who are ready, I want you to copy and paste your, your um, yours in the chat. I want to see some of these. Crystal dropped something in here. I got two things from you, Crystal. Ready? Uh, moisture and styles, new topics. Where's your struggle and your offer? Email topics. Lee, Crystal, staying ahead of the curve and changing times. Natural versus chemical antibacterials. Okay. Topic, Kimberly Wright, Wyndham, luxury travel on a budget, packing for COVID. Yes. Yes. Send that to me. <laughs> I will read that. Packing for COVID. <laughs> uh, Crystal Dow, um, survey would be, what's your big, biggest struggle? Survey would be split ends, breakage, dryness. Very good. Anybody else? I don't see your offers. You have to get the sale. You, you want to get the sale. Let me see who else we have in here. Are you guys having trouble with your offer? Let's see, DIY products and offer by one half off second. D, okay, DIY products. So. DIY products is going to be your, um, I'm looking at Crystal Dow. That's going to be your information part. And then your offer is buy one and half off the second. Now, I want you to know that you don't have to offer half off. I might be getting a little far off the email. We'll talk about that later. But you don't have to offer half off necessarily. Don't be scared to offer your, your um, full price or even 10 or 20% off. Biggest struggle for you to stay home and travel in 2021. You, you need a few more things on that list. Making my once in a lifetime vacation affordable. Very good. Biggest struggle, skin objections without solutions, directions, identifying the skin you're in. That's good. Very good. So does this seem like something like you guys just did that in a minute's time. So does this seem like something you could do if you really sat down and thought about it? You can create these messages and your offers and just keep, it'll be a cycle. And you'll constantly think about what your messages will be. And then when it's time to do your offer, what your offers will be. And remember that email is just one piece of the funnel. So there's other things that you would be doing as well. 
travel safety tips and offer 25% off the service fee. That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay. So you guys get how it's done. I just want to make sure that everybody understands and it looks like you guys do. So we will go on to a couple of things. I think I covered this in the, in the email, but let me see. The next one is every, we talked about being a resource in your email. You want to make sure that you are personalizing your emails and don't just say, uh, a lot of people will send it and it won't have a, even a hello or a greeting or it'll say, I'm trying to think, I'm drawing a blank, but it won't say the person's name is what my point is. Your email should say, hello, Dorothea. You know, use your voice. It doesn't have to be um, any particular way, whatever your voice is. How would you normally greet someone? If it's hello, let it be hello. If it's hi, let it be hi. But use personalization. Remember how I just gave you the format? You want to make sure you have great content. Tell a story. Teach something. Link to a resource at the end. So your resource would be like an app, a great article, a new tool, something interesting. You know, we all love um, fun facts. I don't know anybody who doesn't love a fun fact. So you could put a fun fact at the end of it. Some other content, TED, I love TED Talks. So I put TED Talks in my emails to people. Um, number one, because it's a reputable source, right? We talked about that. So you want to make sure you have personalization and great content. When it comes to the links, you want to, just like with a website, you want to put links that pop off of your, off of your email and off of your pages at the end. You want to have gotten them through your content before they go off. Because you know how it is. It's the same with all of us. As soon as you click one link, you click another link. And before you know it, you're on a rabbit hole. You don't know what you were doing the first time. So make sure that your links that pop off of your site are at the end of your email. Now, this is your email prep timeline. Um, I wanted to create, give you guys an outline that was achievable. I didn't want you to walk away and say, okay, cool, that was great, and I don't know how to get started. So here is your email prep timeline. So I've given you some homework, and I've given you some ways to accomplish that homework. This is another piece of your homework. You can break this up into, into four weeks and you can write ahead of time. So let's talk about this a little bit. In business, you, you see a lot of stuff. Even when you watch some of those shows, like I don't know if anybody watches um, some of the daytime talk in the morning, the news shows, um, or like the afternoon talk news shows. A lot of that stuff is pre-rehearsed and pre-planned months in advance, or the pre-rehearsal is probably that week or what have you, but in business, a lot of the stuff you see, you're like, man, it's really cool how they did that. It all came together. That stuff was planned months ahead of time. We as entrepreneurs need to follow that same model. You want to plan all of your stuff out ahead of time. You don't want to write the week you want to publish. You want to, this plan gets you guys about a month in advance once you get rolling with it by how many you write each month, each, each week. Everything you do, your social media, your emails, it should all be pre-planned. There are tools, there are, there are a lot of things you can do to schedule your stuff out. You want to take advantage of that stuff. You cannot expect to not be overwhelmed if you're trying to do everything in the week that it is due. It's not going to work. Trust me, I've been there. Uh, I've been uh, delivered, <laughs> thank goodness, because it just puts you in a, a whole series of overwhelm, especially if you're still working a day job. If you're still working a day job, drop that, drop that in the comments because you have a lot to juggle. 
So you want to make sure that you're pre-planning everything. All right. So enough, enough, enough preaching. Um, email prep timeline. Week one. I want you to create an account with an email provider. Remember what I said? Pick one. Week two. Oh, no. Sorry. I didn't talk about Canva. I want you to develop a freebie download in Canva and add that to your website. If you have a website and you don't have a freebie, you must create your freebie download and add it to your website. You can do that within a week. Doesn't take a long time. Canva is free. It has all kinds of templates you can use. You can create a 10 steps. If you're doing an audio, all you got to do is create a graphic, record your audio, upload the graphic to your website as the download, and then the link links to the audio so they download that. So don't make it hard. Don't get overwhelmed. Develop your freebie download in Canva and add it to the website. Cam, there's, a, there's other tools too. Let's keep it easy. Use whatever works for you. Just get it done. Week two, I want you to write out two emails and schedule them. Whatever tool you, in, in whatever tool you chose. So remember what I talked about? We're working ahead. So I want you to write out two emails and I want you to schedule them over the next two weeks. The next week, you write out two more. The fourth week, you write out two more. This puts you almost a month ahead or so because you want to be sending an email every week. If you don't have time to write the emails, you can hire someone to do them for you. You don't have to do everything. Outsource. Outsource. There's nothing wrong with outsourcing. Upwork, you can do referrals. I put Facebook groups on here, but just be careful. When, you're, when you are doing um, Facebook groups, sometimes it can, you get a lot of random things in there. So best books on marketing, Traffic Sales and Profit, Lamar Tyler, Launch by Jeff Walker, Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson. And I have an offer for you guys. And while we take questions, if you text Money Chat to 66866, I will vi provide a video audit of your email series. I will give you a free electronic copy of my book, Money Chat the Book, and I'll give you a 30-minute one-on-one to go over your email or whatever you'd like to go over in your business. So, phew, okay. Now, thank you so much, Olivia. Now, um, it is question and answer time. And so, Nina, we can't allow them to be seen so I can see them ask their questions. But no, but we can unmute some people yeah. if okay, to, you know, okay. do it that way. Yeah, that'll work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can unmute, or I guess they would unmute themselves. They cannot unmute themselves, but I okay, do, you <laughs> you have the power to unmute. That's good. You have the power. <laughs> <laughs> Got to figure out who it is, and then I can bring them on. Okay, so if someone has a question they'd like to ask, please um, raise your hand. Raise your hand. And Nina will unmute you and we'll be ready to go. Someone asked about the book list. So the book list um, is launch. Should I just put this in? Let me see. I'll just like type this here. Um, anybody else have questions? Let me know. Did anyone raise their hand? If you have a question, raise your hand in Zoom, or if you just want to type me or something in the in the chat, if the raise your hand isn't working. And she's not going to show your face, she's just going to unmute your voice so you can ask the question. Crystal Lee would like to type her question. Um, or either way you'd like to do it is fine with me. Yeah, a lot of times it's easier to type it. Yeah, it is. Do you see that? What? Yes, I do. So Alicia Jenkins is asking, what are the best resources to automate emails? The the Maybe I wasn't clear on that, but the 
mantle light that I showed you. You can mantle light Aweber constant contact. You can automate and program the emails all in there. So you would create the emails and then there's an automation feature. Let me see if I can go back to my uh, wrong one. Let's see. Let me go back. Um, discard. And this is the best seminar. Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Are there any other? Qu Let me see. I'm while I'm trying to answer. I got two hands. Let's see. Okay. To to Quan, please forgive me if I to Quan Brookins. Let's. I'm going to bring you on right now to ask your question while she's looking for the sheet for. Um, okay. So to Quan is. Taquan, unmute yourself. Hello. Hi, Taquan. Hi. So, so give me two seconds. I'm going to answer this question on automation, and then I'm going to hear your question, okay? Okay, and um, just so you all know, I think um, there's a, a discrepancy. So I did share this um, link with someone. So it might be that person that asked the question. <laughs> Um, so my apologies. I did share this Zoom link um, with someone else that um, really wanted to benefit from this session. So, okay. be, so I'm going to mute myself. I think okay. it might be Jordan Martin that's asking that. Okay. So let me answer this question on automation. So in this is Mandalite, but all programs have this. Um, I'll give you so so you create the emails and then you put them in a workflow in here. Don't get, um, don't worry about the word workflow. That's just what it is. And it's pretty easy to do. So for instance, I have this workflow. See mine all are active. So I'm not going to mess with it too much, but um, uh, general group. And again, remember what I told you, these are all, this is a whole new thing. So there, I don't have that many subscribers on here. I think I only have like 300. Um, and that's the other thing. Once you get going with this, like you can really make money because these are going to be your people. Edit workflow. So I went right here to edit workflow. And, and when I say you can make money, what I'm saying is they'll buy from you because they'll love you. They'll love your products. You'll have good products. You'll have good customer service and they'll buy from you. So see, this is all plug and play. You drag and drop. When they join the group, they immediately get a thank you. I wait five days because I don't want to bombard people. And you can do whatever you need to do for your business, though. And then I send them another email. Community is everything because I want to make sure they're in my Facebook group. And then I send them content. Are you currently drowning at work? That is a big deal for people. A lot of us are over overwhelmed at work. So I'm giving them content to help them. So you see, it's easy as pie. When you're ready, you turn it on, and anyone who comes into those groups, they get that email. Carrie, this is through, this particular one is through um, Mail or Light. Sorry, I'm trying to read and answer your questions. This particular one is through Mail or Light. Okay, is there another question? You had another hand raised, Nina? I do have another hand raised by Lee Crystal. Okay. Lee, I'm going to bring you on to talk. This is going to probably have to be our last question, by the way, Doretha. Okay. Um, so we'll sum it up after. So listen, everybody, since this is the last question, if you have more questions, make sure you text Money Chat to 66866 and let's connect. Okay, Crystal. Good evening. Good evening. How Hi, are how are you? Great. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Good. The seminar was amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Real simple question. Simplest steps um, for the best way to start building an email list. That obviously, it's putting these things in context and giving content. Um, but are there some other things that maybe might be missing pieces of the puzzle for how to simply start building your list? Where Do you have a what? Do you yes, have a website? I do. 
Okay. What is your website? NakedSoapsEtc.com. That's N-A-K-E-D-S-O-A-P-S with an S on the end and then E-T-C, et cetera, the short version, dot com. And do you have anybody on the email list at all right now? No, I just, I haven't, I haven't rebuilt an email list. This is a brand new site. The old okay, site, great. Yeah, got lost. Sorry. Okay, no problem. Yes. No problem. You are starting from scratch. So you, I would suggest you do a number of things. Yeah, number yeah. one, you're going to reach out to everybody you know that is on your personal email list and tell them that you have a new, well, first, do you have a pop-up on your website that collects emails? Yes. Okay, great. Do, are, do you have an offer? I do. Okay, great. So they get a download or something like that, right? No downloads. Um, uh, discounts. Okay. On, on the you need a so download. Need a download. Okay. You need a download. Before you do this, what I'm t- about to tell you to do, you need a download, okay? Okay. okay. Because you don't want to lose anybody that comes who's not ready to buy right away. Okay. So you need a download. But what you're going to do is you're going to email everybody you know on your email list personally. Mm-hmm. You're going to then, you're going to text, once you get that download up there, you're going to text everybody that you're comfortable with in your phone. You're going to text them that link. And in both of these messages, you're going to tell them about your new business and you're going to ask them to share, Mm -hmm. share it. That's the first thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the first way. The the second thing is going to be your, your social media. Um, there are some things and we can talk offline, but there are some things that you can do to get people in your email list on social, from social, from Instagram, from Facebook, there's contests you can run. There's different things you can do that will get you. And and here's the thing, everybody, please don't misunderstand me. We're not just collecting emails. We're collecting emails for sales. You want to turn that into paying customers. That's the goal here. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things you can do, but the first couple things I told you, because I know we have to go, um, I would start there. And that's good for anybody that's on the call. You guys can, can start there depending on where you are with your list. But if, if you're brand new like Nina, just getting started out again, um, start there. And then make sure you connect with me and we can talk about some of the strategies. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Listen, thank you guys so much. I know I have to go. Thank you, Nina. This has been wonderful. Um, look forward to connecting with you guys um, after this. Thank you so much, Dorita. It's been an amazing session. I got some Thank tips you. out of it myself. <laughs> and I'm glad we recorded it. So just to let yes. everyone know all of our recordings will be um, on YouTube in our content library for Detroit Startup Week um, starting in the next week or two. We have a couple um, um, audio-only videos that are going to be coming in as well. So look for that and look for Dorita. Um, follow her on everything, Dorita Kelly. Or yes, Monday. yes. And, I'm on uh, Instagram, and everything. Up with her and support her. She knows her stuff. So thank you again and um, hope you enjoy Detroit Startup Week. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night.